Off-Grid Pumps Hand Lever Pump Installation. A quick note before we get started, always refer to the detailed written installation documents as each installation is unique. This video is to be used as a reference only. The tools you'll need, Teflon tape, vice grips, two pipe wrenches, rope approximately six feet long, a set of imperial combination wrenches, a set of imperial allen keys, Loctite 242 or other semi-permanent thread lock adhesive, and a cloth or rag. The first step will be to check to ensure all required parts were received and are ready to be installed. Then you'll need to remove all existing equipment and inspect and prepare your well. This could involve adjustments to your well casing height above the ground or disconnecting your submersible pump. Next step would be to install the optional flusher valve if you have one. This includes threading it into the lower pump assembly, making sure it's clear of debris and inserting the spring into place. Apply a semi-permanent thread lock adhesive to each connection to ensure a tight seal. You'll want to apply just a little bit of this Loctite 242 or equivalent and then tighten down each connection using wrenches and you're going to want to torque those down to about 15 foot-pounds, so just past hand tight. Okay. Next you'll want to take your first length of PVC drop pipe and slide it over the length of the fiberglass rod, screwing it into place, making sure you're not cross-threading it as you screw it into place. You're going to want to hand tighten this only, although you can use a pipe wrench for leverage. Before putting the lower pump down the well, ensure there is no debris stuck in the bottom of it. Always ensure the safety board is securely in place. The slot in the board is smaller than the diameter of the coupling, so it will stay in place, but you may want to use locking grips to clamp onto the PVC pipe for added security. Apply a semi-permanent thread lock adhesive to each connection where it's stainless to stainless. Here you attach the fiberglass rod that is the next connection point. You can use two wrenches again on the flats to torque this down to 15 foot-pounds, which is just past hand tight. The next step would be to apply Teflon tape to the PVC pipe threaded connections. So on any of the PVC pipe threads, you'll want to just put a wrap or two of Teflon tape. You can slide the fiberglass rod inside the drop pipe so the fiberglass rod can be bent to the side. You can also pre-insert the fiberglass rod inside the PVC pipe and do this step all at once. Again, as with all connection points, ensure the pipe is not cross-threaded as you tighten it down. You can also use a pipe wrench for leverage. You're only going to want to do hand tight on each of these connections, but you can use the pipe wrench for a bit of leverage. You may hear the PVC squeak. That means it's tight. Don't go past that point. When dropping the section down into the well, always ensure the safety board is securely in place. Again, the coupling is larger than the slot, so it will stay, but you may want to use locking grips for added security. You basically keep doing the same process over and over again until you've reached your installed depth, using the installed PVC drop pipe with the weep hole drilled in it last. Use a semi-permanent thread lock adhesive to torque the push rod on to 15 foot-pounds. This next step is crucial. Push down on the push rod until the piston rests on the bottom of the lower pump cylinder down the well. Measure the distance from the top of the pump head to the top of the push rod. This is the push rod protrusion and it must be within 6 and 5 eighths and 10 inches. If it is not within this range, you may need to install a PVC nipple for stack height adjustment. The well seal gets inserted over top of the push rod. Be careful to ensure that the push rod is aligned through the center of the seal body and always ensure that the safety board remains in place. Take care not to cross-thread the pipe connection when screwing the pump head into the PVC pipe. Hand tighten this connection only, although a pipe wrench may be used for leverage. Once in place, you're ready to remove the safety board and drop the well seal down into the well casing and into position. Be sure to use the tabs provided to avoid pinching fingers. Fill any additional ports as needed and orient the well seal as you see fit, knowing where the discharge port is and knowing that the hand lever arm will be attached to the side with the four bolt holes on it. Tighten down the brass nuts on the well seal. 
Use the diagonal pattern to tighten and torque to 15 to 30 foot pounds. Next step will be to slide the back plate over the push rod and down into place. Grab the rubber grommet and you'll absolutely want to make sure this bumper is in place over the push rod, down into place over the linear bearing. Apply that semi-permanent thread lock adhesive to the stainless to stainless connection on the vertical link bar on the clevis. Here you'll screw this into place. Start by hand, but then to finish the process you'll use cloth padded or use a rag vice grips to clamp the push rod and holding the vertical link bar horizontally, turn clockwise to tighten it down. You use the cloth to ensure the push rod is not scarred or marked during this process. At this point you'll want to orient the vertical link so that the fishing loop and the pivot point are as shown. The rope that you have, you'll take and put through the fishing loop in the vertical link, run the two ends so that they're just about equal length, and then take your column, lift it up, and run the rope through the column from the bottom to the top. All the way through. Once you've got them all the way through, you can lift the column up and over the vertical link and push rod down into place. It may take a bit of adjustment to get it into place. At this point you will insert and align each bolt before ultimately tightening them down. It's always good to go diagonally when you tighten bolts down. So each of these bolts will be torqued down 15 foot pounds is where you're going for, just pass hand tight. Apply that semi-permanent thread lock adhesive to the bumper connection. This you're only going to be tightening down loosely, so this is not to be tightened down very much, it's a loose tighten. You're going to torque down all the other connections to 15 foot pounds. So go back over each bolt and tighten them down after putting all of them in. At this point you'll need to insert the two plastic bushings at the tip of the handle. There's two of them, ensure both of them are in place. Get your shoulder bolt and lock nut uh, ready and on hand. You're not going to put them in just yet because at this point you'll use the rope to pull the vertical link up inside the column and pivot it out into place. So you'll align the vertical link with the plastic bushings and the hole through the tip of the handle. Insert the shoulder bolt from the one side that is opposite of the threaded hole on the vertical link and tighten it down. There's only one way this will go through correctly. Insert the lock nut over the end of the shoulder bolt and torque this down. To 15 foot pounds. So tighten it down and then give a check on the handle so test it for smooth motion and then you can either loosen or tighten the lock nut as necessary to get a nice smooth motion on the handle. At this point you're ready to remove the rope from the fishing loop inside the vertical link. Take a look inside to make sure everything's good. And the final step is to insert and push down into place the plastic cap over the top of the column. So once that's in place, you're ready to give your pump okay. its initial test. It may take a minute or two to bring water to the surface. So begin pumping and within a couple of minutes, depending on how far down you've installed your pump, you should have access to water. Questions? Contact us, one 844 og pumps